We'll wait for everyone to get on board. All right, I think we can get started. So welcome to this edition of Lexia's Growth Academy. Today we'll be talking about funding or startups and scale-ups. Uh, with us are Marcus Muderberg, uh, the partner and head of the ITM practice of Lexia Attorneys and Lasse Makalau, the investor. Um, we'll be starting off with a bit of information from Marcos and then moving on to Lasse's presentation and then at the end discussion with regards to funding. But I guess without further ado, Marcus, do you want to tell a little bit more about yourself and then we'll go on to Lasse. All right, thank you, so, and uh, good morning to everybody. And, and it's a pleasure, of course, always uh, being part and hosting this uh, Lexa Growth, Acad Growth uh, Academies. And, and, and this time, as you so said, we are discussing about funding. So besides my work as a, as a tech, partner here at Lexia, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to head also our startup and, and growth practice, and, uh, and there is, uh, I've been involved in the startup and growth company investments and financing with, with different aspects, so over 15 years now, so quite a vast experience of, of different kind of, of funding. I won't say that I'm I'm the expert in in what kind of funding and what situation for uh, uh, per the financial perspective, but of course from I'm, I'm today here more like describing it in overall and from the legal legal point of view. Financing is a really uh, quite comp. No, it's a really complicated question in in, in, in total. And of course, we have it lasted today like uh, 40, 45 minutes to go through different angles. And just wanted to concentrate today a little bit more to, to one little bit new, newer tool of which investor has. So Lasse will tell more about, specifically more about convertible bonds. Uh, Lasse, do you want to say here something in the beginning or? So just shortly, and then I can take over. Okay, great. Sure. Uh, thanks also from my side. It's great to be here, and uh, I hope that uh, we will have a lot of questions regarding the, 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 the funding uh, side. Uh, uh, I have background very much in the finance uh, uh, from the banking M&A finance from already from the uh, about 20 years or, or more. Um, and uh, have been working in, in many different sort of, uh, from many different angles to the finance. So hopefully I can uh, give some uh, answers to your questions, but very great to be here. Thanks. Yeah, excellent. And, and with Lasse's uh, background, yes, as I said, convertible bonds today may be the ma main subject, but we can definitely talk, talk a little bit more broadly and in, 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 in general. In generic, so about about uh, financing and different angles of it. So I'm just trying to have some more. Like, let's put the presentation on. So let's see if we are there. So, is it fine now? Use up? Yep, yep, check. Screenshot. Check. All right. So, how to get your startup funded? And short introduction to the subject, and, and then more detailed uh, discussion on it. I'll try to keep this quite short that we have uh, all ton, tons of, 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 of course, tools and instruments around. But this is like from, from the start, from the start of a startup to, little, the, to the further uh, financing and, and, and growth stages. 
but like in in so uh, sorry like now it's be probably better so start from the first slide so i just wanted before like going further actually to share a few few thoughts about uh, a few numbers from from the early stage growth company funding this is like published by finnish venture capital association and fiban the finnish, finnish business angel association and these are the numbers of of growth company funding and and so here we can see that the funding in Finland and overall has increased quite a lot during the last nine years. Uh, I, we have the numbers here from 2010 until 2019 and the last year was of course a record year once again. It's been, it has been growing for steadily all the years here and which is of course very 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 good news for 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 early stage companies. Here we can see that actually it's a mixture of foreign investors, uh, domestic investors, venture capital, business angels, and uh, other investment, uh, other funding. And of course, the other funding can include whatever from con convertible loans to different kind of other financing tools as we go through shortly today. So just like there is money around and, and it's not always a question about it, do we have finance available, but how we get and what, with, what, with what kind of terms. And to, just to mention that these numbers, of course, show those st official statistics. There might be, and there are a lot of talks that actually there might be a little bit more money around, which we, which we do, not, do not see in these numbers. And that, that's of course good. So not 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 all deals and financing rounds are are recorded as such. So here we have the the types of funding, and 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 this is like short shortly put put like what, what we have uh, from kind of from the start, continuing to the li little more further going instruments and types of funding and of course everything starts from the founding of the company and from the start where you normally might just have a short uh, small loans or you you just invest yourself in the capital nowadays you can of course start a company in Finland without having any share capital so you don't have to officially put any money in in in, in the an investment in the company, if not wanted, but of course, since the first day you need money to run the company. So you can kind of purchase shares and then invest yourself or take small loans. This is this that's this where the story begins. So of course, it might begin begin some some somehow else, but this is well, I'm I'm talking about typical situations, and then what we call FF, uh, triple F, so friends, families, and other fools. So this kind of, this is more like who, at the same time, what kind of tools we have, or type of funding, so the tools, and who, who might be the investors. Of course, when you take, uh, when, when your uh, kind of friends or families or per persons you know investment, invest or finance your company, it might be, different tools already used there. There might, might be equity, it might be loans, it might, might be some other terms of, of finance. But it's like also where to, where to get the finance for, the, for your company. Then we have the next stage how in, in line, which is the growth funding, where normally we took off seed and pre-seed pre -seed and seed rounds. And there, there is like angel investments, uh, and already maybe a multiple, multiple types of of funding available. And there we come for the first time, probably if not earlier, 
the, the question what what would be the best type of funding okay i will say that uh, i will already say that i can't of course say it's not a standard what's what's the best type of funding at what stage but of course there should be some uh, some logic around these types of funding this is where we end up my presentation also is the long-term plan for for the funding that's uh, i already say here when remember so it's many times actually you don't have any longer term uh plan for your funding and that's one of the key things that we could also discuss later with with Lasse. so how also Lasse sees this like because sometimes it happens you take a loan you take equity then then something else and you haven't planned too much you're just uh, about to run out of the money all right and and then of course part of here so the more traditional like of course loans always always available it might be a little bit too expensive and not able to even get a bank loan this has also uh, changed but for the early stage companies banks loan bank loans didn't uh, or were not available that much there are new new startup and growth uh, type of funding also from from the banks especially nordea has been a very good practitioner here in Finland regarding this, but maybe some other types of funding might be more, more easily available. And what is, I just shortly put here, what is actually, it's a sky, more like, Lassie can correct me, but it's more like source of funding, not type of funding, maybe crowdfunding. So it's in, regarding crowdfunding, it's just like maybe for the first time, you seek the finance from the public, not, not only from, from your closer friends or from certain angel investors, but, but you go to public. Of course, crowdfunding is nowadays is regulated differently. We, I don't know, I, we don't go there too far to, today, but it's a little, a little bit, once again, the different type of possibility to, to attract funding without too heavy burden on the reg regulation matters so it's it's some it has some limits but normally when we talk about talk about startups the crowdfunding possibilities are are available what kind of tools you can use there we will hear more more from Lasse today uh, and then like because quite many times we discuss about like what what's the face of the funding so there is what we call normally bridge fran uh, bridge financing so typically between between for example uh, different investment rounds and their convertible notes and convertible bonds which are today's subject are pretty good and and typical uh, tool nowadays type of fi financing now, uh, nowadays we have different kind of trade finance solutions talking shortly about those of course later and then all 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 the other kind of of fine types available of course later in 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 the in the in, in later for later for the company Mm -hmm. Now we, sorry, just moment. It's connection problem with the screen and the computer. Now you probably see funding overview. Yep. And this was quite a lot of actually with what with I or what I already explained shortly, but it's like listed once again. And what is like kind of not mentioned already was 
types of or source of funding it was what is like partly available in Finland but not too much are these incubators and accelerators which are of course quite important part of the business and part of the funding startup funding in, in for example in in the US and maybe inside other some other countries and in inside some, some other parts of Europe too in Finland we don't have too many we have a few of those but actually they they are more like uh, type of type of not always granting uh, or giving any funding having no funding available available but, but more like more like uh, assistance guidance and and and, and pr promoting the companies the few words about the convertible bonds and notes we already we are we all already all have or get quite a lot of, of questions of about convertible bonds and notes and which are together kind of, of convertible uh, loans. And the first question is of course the little bit I I think that Lasse will come back here, but I just wanted to shortly also to have the like the definition of, of convertible bond and note and loan because that was the question what, what was asked just last week because somebody had a convertible note agreement and the other one had convertible loan agreement and was asked what's the difference actually. So I, here I have to say that first of all, so it, whatever is the, is the title of the agreement or the contract, of course it gives some guidance, but at the end of the day, of course it's the content of the agreement or the deal or the funding which matters. So there, the terms are a little bit differently used in, in different part of, of, the, of the world. And what is used in, in the US, for example, it is not used as such no, all, all the time in Finland. But like in overall, you could say that convertible bonds are quite like they, they are instruments, of course, they might be governed by the financial regulation differently, but they are normally like public uh, public funding. So you, when you see it, when, when it's avail available publicly, then you talk about convertible bonds. I, I won't talk about the terms exactly now, but like that's the difference. And convertible notes, notes or in Finland, you quite many times, you use the term convertible, just the convertible loans, which is a generic term. They are more non, more, more like non-public, one-to-one or one, one-to-few types of loans. But what, of course, we will is co co common there is that you the debt that that you get a loan, and the loan is upon what you call conversion. So you can convert. Uh, the the loan grantor can can uh, can convert the debt into uh, equity. So normally shares. Uh, it can be preferred equity or it can be just common shares. It it depends on the case. So this is like the question that you have some kind of instead instead of paying back the loan, which is the normal situation, of course, paying back the loan with interest. So, and, and you might, the other option is to convert the loan to be equity as shares. It can be upon what different uh, features. Normally it can be upon further financing. It can be upon whatever, all, all kind of other point, points or quali qualifying uh, points. So it, Lasse will pro tell more about this. What matters there, of course, is the conversion rate. So how many shares or what is the conversion rate with, with, with the loan? So, and, and that's like when you turn the loan to be shares. It can be automatic conversion, it can be tied to certain points of financing, certain points of, of, of what's happening in, in the company, or it can be upon 
upon the loan grantor to decide if, if he or she wants or if they want to convert. And this is, of course, the question with, with, with certain... Uh, so normally you, you have under the freedom of a, a agreement, of course, freedom to decide what are the actual terms of, of the convertible loan. So when you negotiate from, from one to one. But of course, then they are, there are ready-made uh, types of, of convertible bonds, for example, or convertible bonds available, like investors do have nowadays. So there you assume that the terms are, of course, fixed, if you think from the investors or the company's point of view. But, but normally, of course, because these are the questions quite, we quite many times receive, so is what terms should convertible loan uh, include? Okay, it always includes the idea that in certain cases the loan might be converted into shares, but it's, is, is it automatic? Is it up on the company? Is it up on the debtor? Is it uh, the grantor or, or is it what are the actual actual points where it, it will be or it will not be converted? That's, that's like about negotiations and about to agree at the end of the day. So there is no just one right rule here. Just like that's a legal point of view. But of course, then you have some ready-made instruments as Lasse will tell more about those. And of course, like all investments, you should not only take care or, or agree on, on the on the like conversion or interest or payback times, so the tenure. So, but also there might be some additional questions to be good, to to be agreed also already in the convertible types type of loans. Then that sh shortly like take not taking further time here. So it's like just few funding questions so that was more like convertible where we come where we end can end up to the solution that it's only a loan or it is or it, it might you might end end up or to be a shareholder or from the company's point of view of course you might get new shareholders when the conversion happens so then, and then some other points is of course with all those, all a few other types of funding, the questions uh, which it comes from all parts of the investments is like the valuation questions. And that's of course always the same. Is it a, the conver conversion rate or is it like direct investment in the share capital, the valuation? And this is always the question is like, what is the right valuation? I don't think that we go there too much today. It's a different question, but of course, it has some, some rules and methods to calculate the valuation. Then actually, already last time, we discussed about shareholders agreement and, and shortly touched the, the, also the investment agreement questions and what kind of, of, of shares, etc. different kind of share series there might be. And this is, of course, the question like what well, if we do talk, talk about convertible bonds or direct e equity investment, so what kind of special rights and, and what kind of stocks we are talking about here. Then, just like as a term, because it was there, what we mean with strateg strategic transactions is, of course, little bit different kind of funding. Normally when we talk about funding, we talk about investments and, and type of types of loaning, lo, uh, loans, but of course with your operative business, with like putting your IP uh, into like diff licensing type of, of use, etc. There are a lot of other funding over, over, uh, available. This was more like to to remind, to remind that it's not only in uh, direct investments or loans, but of course you can, from the bootstrapping to operative income revenue, of course, it's a little bit different kind of, of possibilities. 
and what you should definitely have the overview in, in, in total. Uh, all right, and then, then just a few last words here was about like, of course, the question about dilution, we will come there. So is it okay that you dilute? So you, your percentage, uh, ownership percentages is getting lower in the company when you shareholders coming or do you, is it okay to happen now or do you want to postpone it? For example, with con convertible tools uh, and to attract the, the financing all the time, of course, you have consider how to prove the profitable scalability and, and being the financing to be around. I just wanted to like to have further thoughts from, from different different angles and this is like my first uh, not taking any more time so so this is my last slide and and just to remind what i already said in the beginning so have a long-term financing plan and please consider to have also a mixture of different kind of 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 tools and our types of financing and last in my have a little bit different view, point of view here, but financing always takes a little bit longer than expected. And that's why, of course, we have some ready-made tools and, and types of funding available which might shorten the time, but always double the time you have expected it takes. You, it, that, that's quite typical. And always seek advice and assistance for example, from investor Alexia, when when you need when you need when you don't you don't know everything yourself, which is quite normal. We all right. That was my my short introduction about, and now it's Lars's turn to tell a little bit more about investor your your types of fi financing available and especially about the convertible bonds which is pretty new i i think at least available as such you you provide those please good thank you thank you marcus i'll i'll, I'll try to uh, get this share screen thing working in just a sec um uh, let's see slideshow do you see this now? Yeah. Okay, it's right. Good, good. Great. So, ooh, there's some automatic thing there. Well, anyway, so yes, just once more uh, for those who who are who came a uh, little bit later in the in the uh, uh, webinar. Uh, so uh, I'm Lasse Mäkelä. I'm the founder of Investor. We started about eight years ago, and um, and I'm a little bit having. Few, I'm, I'm, Give me a few words. Uh, what is investor first, and then we go to this convertible bonds. So I have about, I think, fifteen minutes or so. So, fifty to twenty minutes. So it's like, uh, take okay. your time, please. Good, good. And uh, if I, I think if there are questions, I, I can. What I think we can take it afterwards, or if if there is possibility of answering in the middle. So I'm happy to to do that as well. But. Uh, but yeah, so quickly, maybe just a, still about my background, which which I said earlier uh, before. I I started in already like 23 years ago as an investment banker in London. I was four years doing IPOs and uh, M&A transactions there. After that, four years in Finland in a, in a banking. Then about, I was about eight years in the industry. Uh, let's say I was heading the M&A department of uh, Kone Corporation. And uh, I was the first employee of Konsti Group, which bought about 14 companies and, uh, and, and then listed to the stock exchange and then a few others. And then eight years uh, now at the Investor. So I've been looking at funding and financing from many different angles of the table. And I think that's very relevant for the understanding the like, uh, how do different people look at funding from different sides of the table? So I think that's very relevant uh, and interesting uh, information which we are hoping to use at Investor. But uh, yeah, so basically who we are, we are, 
we are so called uh, uh, sort of uh, in Finnish it's a sijoituspalvelu yhtiö it's the MIFID 2 investment firm uh, we have a license from the Finnish financial authorities and we have passported that license to to rest of Europe um, last year we merged with a with an Austrian company called Finest uh, which um, was uh, doing loan uh, uh, it, it was an investment platform for loans in Austria and Germany and uh, that's where we very much got the more understanding and information about the loan side as we as investor we have very much been working on the own equity side so the equity side in general and now we with the finest merger we were able to bring this debt side as well to the table which um, the uh, and our, our Current CEO is uh, Günther Lindenlaub. He's um, he's the uh, founder of Finnest. So we made this kind of change here uh, uh, this year, and uh, and now it's started to sort of do this really well uh, going forward. So this is one of the reasons why we now have the debt products here in the Nordics as well. Um, we have investors from pretty much all around the world. We can offer equity bonds and convertible bonds. We have done, uh, we have been working on seven IPOs so far, so we can, we are able to do also uh, stock listings. We have done those to Helsinki and also the Stockholm uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, and uh, we have offices now in uh, Helsinki, Vienna uh, and Stockholm. So far as a group, we have uh, uh, been able to help uh, more than 200 companies to raise more than 160 million euros. So it starts to be quite a sizable number uh, 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 in, in, in Europe, uh, and we are very proud of, of, of that. A little bit more key figures. Um, I mean, the average funding round last year was about 900,000 euros. So it's getting closer to 1 million uh, as an average ticket, uh, what the companies are raising. And then the investment tickets from our investor community, on average, they've been around 3,000 euros in 2018. It's grown a bit more uh, for, for 2019. In the Finnest side, it was closer to seven to 8,000 euros per ticket per investor. So it, the, the debt side is a little bit more, more volumes are, are moving uh, on that side. Um, and we have about 60,000 registered users so far from about, I think it was more than 150 countries um, at the moment. And once more, why partner with us? I mean, what, what, is the, what do we help? What do we uh, give? Um, uh, I think uh, it's important maybe here to note, mention that uh, we have started to work more and more with uh, BC firms, different kind of uh, investment houses, and uh, the, the what really we are bringing to the table is the increased brand visibility, and then uh, the boosting of sales, as this is always a marketing campaign when you are doing an, a round through us, and then of course the proven track record. Uh, the, we have been doing this for eight years now and uh, been um, sort of quite successful on on that front. So, really. What is the, let's say the average, uh, let's say, let's say standard round almost nowadays is so that a company has a VC investor or some anchor investor and they, uh, but the anchor investor is not, um, cannot invest the whole sum or does not want to invest the whole sum. They, they may have some reserves in their fund and they want to get the sort of scalability, get, get more investing investments uh, from other other parts, the then this VC or the big investor they either talk to their other VC friends and try to get them as a syndicate in there, or then they come to us and we do a round together. And that has that has been happening quite a lot nowadays, where uh, sort of good VC firms, uh, known VC firms from Finland, have been using our our our, our side, uh, our our sort of let's say the. The, uh, the marketing tool to, to get more visibility for the rounds. So we bring the funding, visibility, and then marketing ambassadors for target companies.
here's still a little bit about our investors um, on on let's say as a big picture our investor pool is more let's say better educated uh, more sophisticated than average stock exchange investors uh, about 84 percent of our registered users have uh, studied in, in university they have a high um, i mean university degree and about 87 percent of the investors have invested into public shares uh, before so they are they are stock exchange investors but this is for them a let's say method of diversifying your portfolio risk and about 39 percent of our investor investors or investments come from the investment firm so so this is the vc firms family offices uh, any big big other uh, sort of investment firms which which you have and just about the uh, motivations of our investors 50 percent uh, is uh, uh, sort of investing for for the profit which is that they are only looking for profit and that's it about 43 percent they have they are claiming that they have some sort of impact angle they are still looking for funding they are looking for profit but they they it's very important for them that there's some sort of impact angle as well like cleaner waters cleaner air uh, 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 sort of uh, sort of cleaner energy or, or these kind of things so that's very important part and then there's about seven percent which claim that they, they, the the key key let's say the reason to uh, invest is more helping and donation and these are the i guess the more the uh, as you had the three f's so these are the the, the last f the full full category in the sense that they they know maybe the entrepreneur they want to help they want to be part of the uh, the, the issue but it's it's quite a small minor uh, major, minority uh, who who who's only thinking about that so pretty much 93% thinks of profits. So I think that's the important the takeaway from that. Okay, then we go to the convertibles. Um, as Marcus already sort of opened up, um, uh, I mean, they, convertibles are, basically they are, um, they are, it's a debt instrument which can be converted into shares uh, during the bond's lifetime or at the end of the lifetime. Uh, for investors, they offer flexibility, um, and for companies, an alternative funding method uh, when a bank loan or equity round is not appealing choice. So it's in the middle. It's the some call it the mezzanine uh, or let's say junior loan uh, product, but it's in the middle. So often bank loan is one, and then you have the equity, and this is somewhere in the middle. And as Marcus said. It's, there's a lot of variability. There's a lot of convertibles tend to be very tailor-made, uh, so that you have different kind of conversion terms. Maybe investor has to write, maybe the company has to write to convert, you name it. So there's a lot of variability there. And why? Uh, what we wanted to do is that we wanted to standardize these this convertible bonds. We wanted to make it more uh, understandable and more easy to understand for both investors and for the companies sort of like the mcdonald's approach that you know what you get when you come to <laughs> when you come to 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 investors so sort of like there are, there are two two choices two menus uh, of course they are still uh, i'm sure they are still gonna be a little bit sort of uh, uh, sort of let's say tailor made in there at the beginning but we are hoping to push it towards like more standardized product. So, so that as our equity product, for those who have used our equity product before, it's quite standardized. You understand how it works. Investors understand, also the companies understand. So it's, a, it's an, in a sense, it works nicely for the big picture. Uh, you have a small shareholders agreement, uh, everybody knows how it looks like and so on. So it, we want to do the same for the convertibles. Um, then when you look at the convertibles, we basically we have two, two sizes or two, two sort of products uh, uh, in, 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 uh, at large. The, the first one on the left-hand side is the classic convertible bond. This is like 
let's say if you look at the textbooks in uh, in convertibles this is sort of like that product this is the it's a product where again the debt can be converted into the uh, uh, shares of the company but it's up to the investor to decide so this is a product where uh, the investor gets to choose so they can only keep the uh, loan and never convert they can do that or then they can convert at some qualified equity issue uh, situation so this is sort of like the traditional way where um, uh, instead of uh, having a normal bond in a company you could actually get a convertible where you had the right to maybe uh, convert that to shares and get the equity upside of the company generally the 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 terms of conversion uh, it could be 25 percent discount to the next funding round or it can also be a, uh, a already pre-agreed price at what price the, the conversion happens and often these are sort of longer term they are probably from let's say three to five years on average um, uh, bonds uh, on the classical side but then on the other hand as this is more that this is meant for more bigger companies so this classic convertible is uh, can be uh, let's say works best if the company has more than 10 million euros turnover so it's more sort of established companies uh, uh, that that side then we have the bridge convertible bond which is meant for more growth companies and in the bridge convertible bond the pretty much the difference here is that um, instead of a uh, shareholder getting to choose whether they convert or not in the bridge convertible it always gets converted so that's the difference it, so the bridge convertible is much closer to an equity product uh, but but it, it it works in situations where you just don't you don't want to do an equity round yet uh, maybe due to corona or some other reasons you don't really it's difficult to get the valuation uh, correct or maybe it's difficult to get the right valuation for the company but you still need funding so this bridge is good for that purpose you you still get the money but then you agree that let's say you get you give a 25 percent discount uh, after uh, the, uh, the 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 bond uh, uh, matures so in, in the next funding round or so then uh, with some cap cap uh, sort of uh, agreement and these bridge convertibles often they are like let's say one to two years long or even six months to two years long in our in our in our service but very close to a, a bond product but you are sort of delay uh, sorry very close to equity product but you are delaying the let's say the equity and you, you are hoping to get a better valuation after maybe two years and then in those cases the, the bridge is very good um, product for for that and for bridge convertibles we we are saying that the the company should have about minimum half a million turnover once these start to work better uh, in in our uh, sort of investor pool then if i'm let's see why does oh there then still just summarizing a little bit our product still here uh what our products are and um as already mentioned um you have the well you have here the equity bonds classic convertible bonds and bridge convertible bonds and a lot of data about that i'm not going to go through all the all the data points here but but what is interesting here is that basically you have the equity and the first row and then you have the bridge convertible at the last row and these are very sort of close close to from the company's point of view very close pro, uh, pl close products they they work for companies which often have more than half a million turnover uh, b2c is good we still have about 50% of our cases are B2B, so both are work well, but B2C is, tends to get a little bit more benefits uh, because it right 
right away influ influences and helps the sales of the product as well. So when you are doing the marketing campaign, it also hits the sales and people start to buy those products more uh, because of the of the marketing campaign. We've seen that quite a few times now in uh, in in, uh, in some of the cases. Tech always works uh, and green energy, some sort of sustainability impact angle that always works. Uh, but it, it's not a must, but it, it works nicely. Uh, then, of course, if you have a strong brand uh, uh, that always works, uh, helps in these kind of uh, these cases. And then, of course, you, you are looking for growth. So that's the category for, for more the growth companies where you, can, you get to choose whether you do the normal equity or then you do a, a bridge convertible. So those are very almost like very interlinked uh, products. Then you have the, uh, our bonds and classical convertible bonds. These are again quite sort of interlinked. Um, these are both meant for more established companies. Uh, with, with Finnest in uh, Austria, uh, the category has been that turnover is more than 10 million and the companies are more than 10, 10 years old. So a bit more advanced, uh, so-called Mittelstand, which is the, what they call that in Austria and Germany. But the bond and classical convertible bonds are suitable for that category, for those companies. But maybe I'm not gonna to go too much uh, uh, through those for now. Um, and I, I, will, I will give these slides also to be distributed if, uh, if people want to, to see them. Then just uh, maybe last, last slide here, uh, showing that as, as the convertibles are uh, it's a new product for us. We have not been really doing this so many times before, uh, but uh, we are happy that we, we had our first convertible round with Nava uh, uh, in, uh, during the summer. It was a bit pity that there, there was some, uh, let's say the timing was a bit difficult to, to get earlier. It really much opened at the end of June and uh, sort of uh, ended in July. So it was very much during the summer holidays. But uh, uh, although the timing was a bit uh, challenging, but still it was a great success of getting almost 1.3 million euros for convertible bond um, uh, for, for Nava uh, company. So, so in that sense, new product done and tested, works nicely, and we are now looking for um, any, any companies who, who want to talk about that. And I, I think the key here is that the, uh, now we have a better, uh, let's say, menu of products. So in, in, if, if a company needs funding there, we, we have different options to, to be given to the company. So it's, it's a, uh, it makes sense to have a discussion, talk about these issues and see uh, whether this convertible is the right product or is it the equity or is it something else. So we are happy to uh, go through these discussions with the companies who, who are looking, looking at, the, at the funding uh, uh, funding at the moment. So that's it. That's what I, what I had in mind. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Lasse. Excellent presentation. And, and yes, please, if you have any questions, you can type those and, and, uh, in the chat or probably we will send the presentations and, and contact information and maybe ask also later if, if, if needed. And, and, and Lasse, about that, because like today was, today's subject was uh, uh, financing novel, but maybe convertibles. As, as in, in, in the main role, convertibles, to my knowledge, haven't been used that much in, in startup and early stage funding so far. Why is that? Yeah, I, that's a good at least in, in Finland. At least in Finland, so, but it like, you know, maybe in our world, yeah, please. Yeah, I, I think the, I think the, they are, we, in some places it's been used and some investors like to use those more than the others. So it's been very sort of selective. Some people do have them a lot, but some don't have at all. So, so I, I think the, the question is more about the, 
uh, because this is more is a slightly more advanced product. So I, I think it's question about also that just not people are not aware and maybe so much about the product yet. So I think that that's also one one reason. I don't know so much about the U.S. market, but my understanding is that there's quite much more the the convertibles have been used uh, in the U.S. market. This yeah. may be uh, legal reasons. There may be regulatory reasons for those, uh, but uh, but I think and, at least and tax reasons, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But there's no there's no reason why not to use them in Finland, and uh, and I I think it's it's just question of more about investors and companies maybe not knowing them so yeah. well. I think that's my opinion too, or my view too. So it's actually, because we've seen like, of course now it's the last 10, 15 years, we have had a little bit more what you call startup, startup boom here and, and, and a, lot, a lot of more investments available and quite traditional equity deals from from in the beginning like but now seeing more and more different kind of of types of funding and convertibles of course they are becoming uh, a much more important part of the part of the especially when the when as Lasse said you are not that the valuation questions you can always postpone a little bit the question about the valuation for example when using convertibles i think that is one of the key aspects here and the second is of course from the company's point of view if you have the possibility to choose do you want equity or do you want pay the loan back then of course it gives you more more freedom and of course you can also if it's good or bad, but avoid the dilution where possible. Yeah, and, and maybe just one one additional thing. I think that in general, like if if you like, let's say the traditional funding thinking is that let's say if you can get well, first try to get the money from the customers. That's the best ever. So the, that's the that's the yeah. best sales. And the second one is bank loan. If you can get bank loan, great, take it. <laughs> that's uh, uh, that that's good. Then the third one is this, let's say, junior loans, uh, bonds, uh, convertibles. If you can get those, great, take those. But then the last one is the equity. And often the equity is the most expensive for the company because of the dilution and so on. But, uh, but often in the growth companies, that's the only option. But uh, it's good to rem remember that there are other options as well. Yeah, that's a really good point because Quite many times you just rush in the equity deals. I, I won't say that they are correct at some place, but you should definitely consider also. And that, that I think that that was our message today also, that consider different kind, types of financing and, and tools was available. So it's it, there is a lot of those. And as Lasse say, not, and as I mentioned, not all types are available at certain stage, but you should be an, 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 an aware of what is available and of course aim to go that at that stage that you will get that kind of, of financing uh, you, you want. Today we didn't talk about, about anything about public financing or the, the business Finland types of grants or something like that, of course, at least in Finland. That's part of the business, but it's not in 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 in, in global. Is that typical that you have that kind of government-based funding or loans available? That there. Okay, so you also. Yeah, I think we have two questions. Um, the first one from Anthony. Uh, Anthony is asking: Can convertible bonds give any debt risk to founders, owners of the company? Yeah, can I can I answer or <laughs> the, the uh, yeah uh, that's a very good question. I, I think there is uh, like like probably many who have been speaking with the banks. Often the bank wants to have a personal guarantee for the loans uh, in many cases from the from the entrepreneur. But then on the bonds and convertible bonds, uh, we don't require that. Uh, uh, of course, there there is a Let's say if we can, if the founder wants to do it, then uh, I think we that's that that may of course uh, reduce the the interest uh, slightly, the the risk of the of the bond for for for, for the uh, for the uh, for the investors. But in general, 
uh, we don't require that. So it means that uh, uh, you, you don't have a personal risk, uh, but of course then on the loan side in general, uh, company side, so if the company goes bankrupt, uh, there's a normal, and I'm sure Markus can tell more what the risks there are, but, uh, but in general, just for the convertibles, uh, um, no. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Marcus, also, yes. to, uh, all right. Uh, we had the second question. I hope Anthony got his answer. Um, the second question from Kelvin. Hello. Nice presentation. What is the benefits of convertible notes for startups and for an, the investor? Also, can you give an example of this convertible bond and the terms conditions both startups and the investors get into? I think that goes into a bit, bit, <laughs> more detail than we have time for with regards to the second question, but the first one. Um, so the benefits of the convertible note for startups and investors. Yeah, I guess from, from my point of view, I think for the, for the growth company, for the company, the benefit is that you, uh, if, if you don't really want to set up the valuation now, if you, if you don't, if you don't feel like doing an equity offer right now, so the convertible is a good way to sort of, let's say, postpone the, the value, valuation decision uh, of, to the later. Uh, it may be that you, uh, you have had some hiccups during the corona and you, you see that already next year or the year after, your turnover will look much nicer. So most likely you will get a better valuation then. So, but you still need the funding. So in that sense, that, that could be one way. Uh, that's a benefit for the company. And I guess also one benefit is that the, to, the decision to do convertible notes, it's well, slightly lighter than on equity side, where the equity, you need to have the AGM decision uh, unless the board has a mandate to issue new, new shares. But it's, it's a bit more technical uh, thing, I think, uh, for that first. Yeah. And you can always solve those technical problems, which yeah. <laughs> is some paperwork, I don't know. But it's the valuation, of course, and of course the possibility if you wanted to delay the, the dilution and, and kind of, of thinking that's already said the possibilities to how to pay back or probably to convert. So it's like, it's good, good questions all the time. So yeah. there, as I said in the beginning, there is probably no just correct answers here from the company's point of view. So it depends on the case, but of course, to know what's available, so that's good. But from the investor's point of view, let's say, so what, what are the good, your, your yeah. instruments, what are the good parts there? Yeah, I think they, they for, for, from the investor side, uh, again, let's say if you, if I would, as an investor, I would want to invest in a growth company if I do, if I invest in equity, I sort of, I know that it's equity, uh, it can go up or down, you know, I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, but it's sort of like that uh, you are part of the, you are owner at that company. But then if you, if it's a convertible note and you invest into the note, the company promises that they will pay, let's say, for example, 5% interest per year. So in a sense, you are guaranteed the 5% interest unless the company goes bankrupt or, or uh, cannot pay the loan. So, so in a sense, you are guaranteed some sort of return uh, for, for that. As the issue with the startup and growth company investing is that you, you may have to wait eight to 10 years before you actually get the exit. Whereas in convertible, you actually get the return. And it may be that if this is a four year bond, you, you, sort of, you get something after four years. You either get the bond back or then you convert it to the shares. And the, the benefit is also this option. Uh, like you, because after four years, you know that whether the company is going to the better direction, if it's going upwards or downwards, if it's going upwards, I may want to convert and become a shareholder. So I have an option to, to the shares uh, of the company. So those are the benefits. All right. That was really, really well uh, kind of summarized. And, and yes, I think we didn't have a this time, no further questions. Correct. So, and it's all more, it's already four past 10. So I think I, from my 
side. So I want to thank you everybody attending this. And I, I hope this was a short introduction to in, in, in overall and, and especially to convertibles and especially those what what investor has has launched recently and which which as Lasse said is a kind of kind of good like uh, approach to have a little bit uh, to have a little bit more structured type of, of, of convertibles available. Of course, we at Lexia and, uh, and the others also help to structure whatever kind of convertibles. But then you you might be good to if you are a little bit more experienced when using those, or then you might have. Uh, but of course, there are some standards to follow and and it, and a lot of advice around there. So even even if it's like one to one one-to-one -one, uh, convertibles. But anyway, we could discuss on this for, for, for hours. We have to stop for today. Thank you, Lasse, for attending. And thank you, Yuso. And Yuso, do we have already the next growth acad Lexia Growth Academy in, in calendar or what force we have for the next time. Last time we had shelters agreement this last time, a little bit more on, on investments, funding, and what, what will be next? So the next one would be somewhere around November. We haven't finalized the time yet uh, when we'll be organizing the next event, but it will be around platforms uh, and related, related legal matters. So we're still finalizing also the, 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 uh, subject matter and and who will be presenting with us yeah i think we will go somewhere in the platform and data world and not not only kind of data protection so person personal data but data in all world and i'm got try to touch that questions uh from the legal point of view and and from a little bit different angles so let's okay so far, so good this time for the next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, you Lasse, especially. Yeah. All right. Have a good Thank day. Bye-bye.